The Vikings lost again. Their opponents set a record again, and it was a one-score heartbreaker again. What can we do about all this? Welcome to the Locked On Vikings podcast. You liked it on three, one, two, three. You, liked it! you are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Locked On Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I am your host, Luke Braun, and let us find some gosh darn joy today. Welcome to the show, and thank you so much for those of you who listen every single day to the Locked On Vikings podcast. You can find this show anywhere you find your favorite podcasts, whether it is any podcast listening app like SXM, where you can also find live broadcasts of the game, home broadcasts even, uh, if you maybe are like me and you don't live in state, but you still want to listen to Paul Allen. Uh, you can also find this show on YouTube or Amazon Fire and Roku. Just download the Locked On Minnesota Sports app. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. 28-24 is the final of the Vikings Chargers game. They fall to 0-3. Oh no, everybody cancel the season. Let's just sim it. The Vikings aren't even going to show up to the last, the last 14 games because it's over. Uh, historically, it's only happened a couple other times. So clearly... Um, there's no reason to watch the Vikings anymore. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Uh, but it does feel like some people want that to be the case so that they can do something else with their Sundays. Do those people, I say, do it. Be strong. Do Go do what you want. You're, it's a free country. If you don't want to be a part of it, you don't have to be a part of it, but let's, let, let the rest of us enjoy it, right? Uh, here is the headline for me of the game. I mean, this game was a back-and-forth contest that... Um, you know, the Vikings fell behind by two scores. They made a comeback off the back of a couple of pretty incredible plays by K.J. Osborne and then a Justin Jefferson breakaway touchdown. Uh, both really, really nice throws as well. Um, there was still just that sort of air of sloppy, though. There was a ton of penalties, way too many penalties in this game. There was another fumble in the red zone, which just stings so much when you lose by less than a touchdown. It's like that could have been the drive. That could have been the difference, right? Um, but hang on to the ball, right? The Vikings did get a fumble on their own, but they ended up losing the turnover battle because the game ended on a, a, a pretty insane sequence where the Vikings didn't get it on a fourth and goal situation where they actually got set up with uh, a fresh set of downs off of a Chargers penalty. They don't get it um, in a pretty rough sequence. The Chargers, in their drive to try to kill the clock, end up with a fourth and one. And if they were to convert that fourth and one, they'd be kneeling. So they go for it on their own uh, 19, I think, or no, tw 24, their own 24 yard line. They go for it and they don't get it. So the Vikings actually get set up functionally in the red zone with about a minute to go and a chance to take the lead. And t they uh, throw at the goal line after a very interesting clock management situation where uh, the, the Charger, the Vikings had no timeouts. The Chargers had all three. So the Vikings were kind of okay with letting some more of that minute fall away. If you have three timeouts and you're the Chargers, and let's say the Vikings scored on, there was a, a, a wheel route that, or like, what did Mark Sanchez call it? Like a, not like a whoopsie daisy, but something funny like that, like a whirly bird, I think is what he said. Um, never heard that called a whirly bird, but whatever. Uh, it was kind of like a, a fake choice that turned into a wheel. And he got way open on it. K.J. Osborne could have caught the the uh, go-ahead touchdown there, but th the ball was long. So let's say he catches that, and there actually would have been like a buck ten left or something like that, like, or maybe even more. I think that was actually before they um, didn't get the fourth down. I, I don't quite remember. Either way, that could have been the go-ahead touchdown, right? And if that happened, the Chargers would have had like a buck thirty to go and three timeouts, and that's too much time, right? But if you give it back to them with 15 seconds, those three timeouts don't really go very far. Um, and that's kind of part of the logic of keeping the clock going there, but that's not actually what KOC would th was thinking. Um, so I'm probably giving him too much credit. What he was tr thinking was, I can't say anything to Kirk Cousins, my headset is out. That was the thought going through his head. 
So the headset goes out in this like crucial moment, and then Kirk Cousins has to call a play. He calls not a spike, not get up to the line and spike it, but like an 18 second dial a whole giant thing up, and then they throw the ball. He throws an accurate ball off of TJ Hawkinson's frame away from a coverage. So he's got to kind of go out for it um, away from the defender and he gets his hands on it and he drops it and it tips up and it becomes a tip drill. So one charger can't get it. He tips it back up. Another charger can't get it. He tips it up for the next guy. And then the third guy actually pick, picks it, takes it down. And then the, the chargers kneel out the rest of the game. Um, that's how this game ends. Total heartbreaker. And here's the thing that I want to really focus on in this game. Justin Herbert went over 400 yards passing. Over half of that was to Keenan Allen. 200 yards. Over 200 yards for Keenan Allen on 18 catches. This is a disgusting output for, t- for Keenan Allen. You can't let one guy do that to you. Um, and so the, the first kind of point I want to make is to sort of theorize what I think is wrong there because this is now another time where this defense has done something that isn't just bad. Be one thing if it's like, ah, you know, they gave up 350. That's too many. You know, you got to probably shore up your pass defense. It's not just bad. It's embarrassing. It's a record. Uh, Justin Herbert completed, I think, 40 of 47 of his passes. And among quarterbacks who have attempted more than 45 passes in a game, that's the highest completion percentage ever. He set that record. But here is the theory that I have about this. And I'll, I'll maybe investigate this more as the week goes on. So... This is just going to happen. I know that's like a tough sell, and I, and I know we all really want to have something where we point at it and go, hmm, there it is. That's the problem. If you just switch X for Z, then bang, everything's good to go. Uh, or if you just fire the right guy, if you just get rid of the, the, the person that's the problem and put in his backup, who is obviously better, and the Vikings were just too stupid to know it, that's a theory we come up with all the time, right? Like, I know we, we really want there to be something like that, but there isn't. This is just going to be how it works. So here's the deal. Brian Flores blitzes all the time, right? Blitzes like half the time. He's just going to. He's always going to. You need to basically hope that the quarterback doesn't get the ball out of his hands quickly and that they can't consistently execute on quick substantive pass game. And I say substantive as in, you know, not three yard hitches. I'm talking nine yard plays, seven yard plays, 11 yard plays, that kind of thing. And if they can do that uh, consistently, they can just beat Brian Flores' defense. Any offense that can do that consistently, congratulations. You get to put up 400 on Brian Flores' defense. That's a hard thing to do consistently. And I don't think you can say that about a lot of teams. I think, I think that's part of what makes Justin Herbert a pretty special quarterback for the, for the Chargers. It's kind of what we witnessed in, in U.S. Bank Stadium. Um, but it's sort of that's the central flaw, right? You can't really scheme around just how bad this roster is. And we kind of knew that going in, right? If you listen to me going up to this season, I was going to say there are going to be games where they just get 400 put up on them and lose. That's just going to happen. And the offense just has to outscore it. And they didn't. Um, It's just where we live. And the, the answer isn't stop blitzing. It would be like telling the 1990s Cowboys to stop throwing skinny posts. It's just what they do. Um, and it's so core and central to, and everything else is so built off of it that you're basically asking them to design an entirely new defense on the fly. And that's just not really plausible in today's NFL. Um, but the real thing is, this scheme set the players up with a lot of opportunities, a ton of one-on-ones, a ton of abilities to go you know, catch an interception. And Caleb Evans has an interception that he made in coverage in trail position, and he actually made the catch, tips it up, and it lands right in Josh Palmer's lap for a touchdown. Um, You got lots of opportunities. Defensive linemen were one-on-one with offensive linemen all day. Dean Lowry was one-on-one all day. Harrison Phillips was one-on-one all day. Kyrie Stonga, one-on-one all day. Jaqueline Roy, one-on-one all day. Jonathan Bullard, one-on-one all day. Someone win. (laughs) Go win your one-on-one. Your one-on-one with the center. Kill him. Come on. You're probably bigger than him, especially if you're a D tackle. Go kill him. Hey, we on the other side, we see that happen all the time with our guys. Go go win. Win your matchup. Go be a playmaker and make a play. And Daniel Hunter was the only person in the world that could do that on the whole team. And one guy doesn't make a defense. Now, worry ye not, the offense is gonna get its lecture too. And I also want to have a greater conversation about like, oh my god, they're 0 and 3. What do we do? Right? Um, so all that's coming up next. 
Thank you so much to the sponsor of today's episode, LinkedIn Jobs. They help you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's very easy. Just to put the uh, purple hashtag hiring frame on your LinkedIn profile. That'll spread the word that you're hiring. And then you can post your job for free. It's super intuitive. You'll figure it out immediately. Uh, they've got all kinds of tools that'll help you too, like screening questions and such that make it really easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience and, and candidates that fit you and your culture. That's just like really important part of this, that every business is different and every, every corporation and every team is, is different with a different vibe. And it's important to find somebody that uh, matches what you specifically need. This is not a cookie cutter operation. You know, hiring is just isn't like that. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks so much for those of you who listen to the show uh, every single day. Uh, it's, it kind of gets tough around this time. There's a lot of negativity going around. And so I, I super, super appreciate the members of the community that are here every day and who, who just enjoy talking about football and, and don't want to police who is or isn't discussing it correctly. Uh, let's move on to the offense. Um, hey, guess what? The Vikings got 100 yard rushing uh, as a team. That's They were the last team in the league to do that. Oh, no, they weren't. The Steelers hadn't done it either, and, and technically they played later. So <laughs> second to last team in the league to get 100 yards in a game. Uh, it's week three. That's rough. But we did that. Uh, the Vikings actually were really, really successful on the ground. They figured something out in the run game, and they actually got a lot of push. For, for whatever I could see uh, in just the live viewing, which is always going to be shoddy, so grain of salt, but it just looked like we were getting push. It looked like Ingram and Cleveland and even Schlotman were, were getting a lot of push uh, and just getting guys down the field. And Madison didn't really have to like uh, find the right gap and make a guy miss to make it a successful play. He could just follow the blocking and then just kind of go as far as the line took him. And that would be six, seven yards. Um, obviously hard on the live viewing. And I, I might actually look a little bit deeper in that. But I thought Madison did a, a pretty good job outside of fumbling twice. Neither of those fumbles counted. One was called dead on forward progress, which was not the quickest whistle in the world, but I would say quicker than not. Uh, so I would say sort of lucky there. And then another one where he was uh, called down. And I think he was down, but it was like kind of bang, bang. And so from an evaluation standpoint, like I'm not for you don't get away with that, right? Like we all saw you fumble, right? Yeah, you, you got uh, you got the call that you were technically down by contact, but you got stripped dog. <laughs> like, hold on to the ball. So we still have this fumbling issue and the Vikings did lose a fumble from TJ Hawkinson who caught the ball and also kind of could have arguably, there could have been a whistle for forward progress there. There wasn't. Um, I don't think it was egregious. A lot of people were really, really mad. I don't think, I don't agree with them. I don't think it was an egregious whistle at all. Uh, and I also thought, hang on to the football, man. This cannot happen to you twice. Um, the the Chargers really did know that the Vikings had a fumbling issue. They tried to strip every play. And honestly, that might have led to some run production because when you're trying to strip, you're not getting the most out of that tackle and it gets a little bit easier to just kind of churn your way through it. So that might have sort of come at a cost, but it, it, it paid the dividend of fumbles. <laughs> and then that's, you know, turnovers are always going to be worth that. Um, that said... Okay, we got something figured out with the run game. So that's this like big issue. They couldn't run at all. Worst run game in the league. All right, they've kind of put themselves back into normalcy, uh, at least statistically, with a good game on the ground. They proved that there can be a good game on the ground. Now, the Chargers defense notoriously bad against the run. So, you know, go beat somebody good if you really want to prove that you're good. But at least we can prove that they're like normal or they're capable of producing normal. Um, the passing game, on the other hand, wasn't bad. But it left a little bit to be desired. J Justin Jefferson didn't get a target for the whole first quarter. And it tells me whatever game plan stuff the Chargers did to take him away was working and Kirk was coming off him. Um, and, and Cousins had a lot of plays this this week where he, he would drop back, he would want something deep, he wouldn't get it, and then he would have to move on into his progression, check down, take a sack, take a gibby hit, whatever. He was going through full progressions, like, a lot. And at, I would say, varying levels of speed. Um, I kind of am, I, I don't think I'm quite pleased with the, I've been kind of saying everything is very slow, right? And and some of that has to be on the quarterback and just timing and execution and rhythm. 
blame it on whoever you want to blame it on, but I'm here to tell you the rhythm wasn't very good. And I think that led to Cousins taking a lot of hits, whether it was his fault or not, you know, who was the one getting the punishment. And that made some throws be off. I think there were some other accuracy issues in situations where he wasn't hit. So I'm not particularly pleased with with Kirk Cousins. Uh, and I think it's a little easier for me to say that because this year the standard's different, right? The standard is not just status quo, don't be so much of a disaster that we're forced to move off of you and trade you, uh, and, and that our contract, you know, is really, really hard to get rid of you, so you have to be really, really bad to justify it. This time, you have to be really, really good to justify more contract because status quo is that you leave. And at the very least, Kirk has played status quo to this point in the season. But I think he's been below his own standard. I think he's definitely been better in other seasons. And I know, and statistically, it's a great thing. Couldn't care less. I think that there is absolutely meat left on this bone. Um, that said, Justin Jefferson did get going over the game. He got 149. So there's a whole thing about him possibly being the first receiver to ever start a game with 350 plus yard games. Um, or yeah, to start a season with with three buck 50 games. 149. Almost there. Uh, but he got a lot of that on a 52-yard touchdown that was fantastic. He got a couple of other explosives. He was really there to be a deep explosive guy. They tried to get him going with a couple of bubble screens, and those were fine as as just sort of rhythm plays. But really, the value came in, in going explosive. And Jordan Addison had a really nice game. He caught six balls for, I, I want to say it was like 60, 50, 60-some 60 yards, 62, I think. Uh, so not like eye-popping production or anything like that, but absolutely was, I mean, there were drives that just went through only Jordan Addison and went all the way down the field. Um, and so you kind of showed that, hey, here's that counterpunch. Somebody can just sort of, he can just sort of like take over the game at, at, at certain points. He's not going to be your superstar of superstars. And he absolutely struggled with the press and the physicality in the same way he did against Philly. And that's just going to be part of it, but he's getting his production anyways, which was sort of the thesis of Jordan Addison. Like, yeah, he's going to have some reps where he just gets like smoked at the line of scrimmage. And then he's also going to get six catches for 60 yards and you're going to be totally fine with it. Um, so Hawkinson, I thought did well enough too, although hard for me to forgive the fumble and, and also, uh, as difficult as the catch was at the end, that's on Hawkinson. I mean, that ball was where it needed to be, right? Game is on the line. You're a tight end. You're now the highest paid tight end in the league. Make that catch. I think that that's perfectly reasonable to expect from TJ Hawkinson. So a productive game, but not one I'm all that happy with. But I think a lot is going to be made of the offensive line. And we're going to see where Dalton Reisner slots into this. I, that'll be something we all talk about a lot. I think you won't really get a good answer until Wednesday if if media can see them practice. Um my guess is that media won't be able to see them practice because the Vikings are going to want to be cagey about this. But that's going to be, I mean, we're not really going to know what the Vikings are up to with Dalton Reisner. Uh, but I don't know. I, I think people blamed Ingram for a couple of things that weren't actually on him that are just kind of hard to see on the broadcast angle. So I'm going to kind of take that, put a pin in it, watch the tape. I'll get back to you what I really thought of who did what on the offensive line. But like I mentioned before, Kirk Cousins got hit way too much. And whoever's fault it is, something's got to give here. Something's got to get fixed or your quarterback's going to die. Maybe they're all right with that because he's not your long-term quarterback. This is your the last year of you. Yeah, we're going to wear you out. <laughs> Maybe that's what they're doing. Um, but speaking of the future... What happens in it, right? What happens for the rest of the season, and and where do we go from here? Are we tanking? Are we doing tanking on thing? I don't know. I don't. I don't think I'm going to be there. And I think for for you and I, dear Vikings fan, and me a Vikings fan, um, there's we can't do anything about this, right? We can't. We cannot say. I hear a lot about like people are saying it a lot more lately. I don't know what the deal is, but people are saying a lot more about like holding the team accountable as fans. And I think I saw somebody actually say that the Vikings loss was the fans' fault because the fans didn't hold them accountable enough, which is insane. And I, I want to address that kind of thing. Is like, what is our responsibility as fans? Uh, as well as, hey, man, 0-3, is it over? Do we give up, right? How do we do this? Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. Today's episode is brought to you by DoorDash. DoorDash is not only the clutchest place to grab a quick meal from either your favorite restaurants, some of your favorite chains, or, or even local joints you might not have even known about otherwise, which I definitely have a few that I like, will just walk to now, just that I discovered on DoorDash. It's really fun. Uh, but also groceries. And that can really come in handy if you're in the middle of a recipe and you realize, oh my God, I forgot the lemons, right? I went to the grocery store, I got it. Oh my God, I forgot the lemons. Just punch it in on DoorDash. They'll bring it right to your door and they do it pretty quick. Uh, that is the convenience 
and awesomeness that we have all come to know and love from DoorDash, but also applying to things that are not just prepaid meals. Uh, with Also, they have easy substitutions uh, right in the app and the best in-class customer support. DoorDash delivers groceries exactly how you want it. You can get 50% off of your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use code LOCKEDONNFL at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's $50 off up to $20, no minimum subtotal, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code LOCKEDONNFL. Don't forget, that's code LOCKEDONNFL, all one word, all lowercase, for 50% off of your first order with DoorDash. So, the Vikings are 0-3, and history will tell you and I don't need to tell you this. If you have consumed any other Vikings content, I hope you haven't consumed any other Vikings content yet and that you're coming to me first. Uh, but if you watched NFL pregame, right, when they were making a big deal about 0-2 versus 0-2, and, um, and now it's 0-3 versus 0-3, so they're going to make an even bigger deal about it. You will know that 0-3 teams, I think like six of them have ever made the playoffs. It just doesn't happen a lot. Now, the reasons for that are pretty self-evident, right? If you lose three games in a row, you probably suck. And I don't think the Vikings can can really beat those allegations right now. <laughs> They're like minus eight in the turnover, or minus seven in the turnover battle, or something like that. They're uh, no minus eight. They went. They were seven going in, and they're now eight. Um, they're giving up records on defense. I mean, I don't think they can beat the allegations. They have the most hit quarterback in the league. I don't think they can be, beat the suck allegations. Uh, so, are they going to make the playoffs? Pfft, I wouldn't put my money on it. Um, but is it over? Do they have no chance at all to make the playoffs? Is it impossible? Of course not, right? Rattle off two, two wins here, right? Go beat the Carolina Panthers and then go win a home game against the Chiefs. Tough game, but go win at home, right? Go pull off an upset at home and then you can maybe prove that you, that you deserve it, right? Or shoot, be two and four. Two and four is not the craziest thing in the world. You go two and one for the, the rest of this stretch. Um, that is, or two and one for the next stretch, right? Then, then you're, not a good team, but you at least feel like you're in normalcy, right? You're not going into, oh my God, what is, what, what's, we're drafting second on Tankathon right now, right? Um, but there's a reason that it has only happened a few times. That's really, really hard to do, especially when there were 16 games or even 14 games. You know, you'd have that much less time to, to make it up. But so put it this way, the Vikings have 14 games left, right? They go seven and seven for those games. They are seven and 10. It's not good enough. Right. They can't go 500 anymore. So they have to go. Let's say they go uh, 10 and four for the rest of those games. That's 10 and seven. Maybe that wins the division. Lions are two and one now. So they could go 10 and four for the rest. That's like really good. 10 and four is one of the better teams in the NFC if you start 10 and four. Uh, if they are truly one of the better teams in the NFC, they can maybe win the division, maybe get a wild card spot. But that might not even be good enough to make it 10 and seven. That's where we're at now. So the Vikings essentially have to be a good team from here on out. They don't look like a good team. So they have to figure something out really fast, uh, figure out how to stop fumbling, figure out how to stop giving up records on defense. And uh, if, if they can do that, then they have a chance and they have a chance to do that. And that's what's beautiful about sports. Is you have an opportunity to prove the haters wrong. If you think that they are hating on you too much, go prove it. Here you are. Your opportunity is in front of you. Don't say we didn't give you a shot. Um, but it's not our job to go beat the Carolina Panthers as fans. We don't get to play against the Carolina Panthers. The Vikings play against the Carolina Panthers. We watch it on TV, or maybe we go to the game. Uh, so as fans, you, you got to understand, I guess you got to kind of reconcile, like, what is your relationship with the sport? For me, I, I love football. I just, I love watching it. I love analyzing it. I love thinking about it. I love theorizing about it. I love learning about it. Um, and so any chance I get that I get to watch professional football is just exciting. I'll, I'll, I'll watch Steelers Raiders and I don't really have a dog in that fight at all and, and enjoy it. Um, so I don't need the Vikings to have a chance to win and make the Super Bowl. I don't need them to be 1998 good to enjoy it. And I think some of you do. Um, there are definitely some people out there that, that get their hopes up every year for a 1998 level contender season. And then it doesn't happen and they get really mad and disappointed. Um, and there are definitely people that is not just Vikings fans at all. That's all sports fans. I, I say it all the time on this show. If you're new to this show and you're hearing it for the first time, here you go. Uh, there are two kinds of sports fan. There's the kind of sports fan 
that I, I would put myself in the category that can just enjoy it. And if they don't win the Super Bowl, hey, whatever, right? I enjoyed the heck out of 2022. Last year was awesome. And I think if you can't enjoy last year, as much as hey, there's all these little signs that it's not going to work out and that it's going to fall apart and that they aren't actually a contender, right? They're 13 and four. The Bills are 13 and four. Very clearly different calibers of team last year. Um, and if you can look at all that and say, I get it, I understand it, but oh my God, this was really fun. And I actually really enjoyed it. And I'm glad that it happened. And I, and I have a great memory of that season. There's that kind of fan. And then there's the kind of fan that watches that whole season, laments that they aren't losing more for draft space <laughs> because they know they're not going to make the Super Bowl, right? And you go, hey, if, if you didn't win the Super Bowl, you wasted all of our time. There's that kind of fan, right? That kind of fan lives in misery. And that kind of fan exists in basketball, in baseball, in hockey, in football, of course. That kind of fan exists everywhere. If you're that kind of fan, you probably are miserable a lot. Like, you probably hate watching the Vikings more than you like watching the Vikings. And hey, look, whatever, man, it's free country. You do what you want. But look, football does this. Your team loses. A big news flash. Your, your favorite basketball team loses. Your favorite baseball team loses. Even if they're the Yankees, they lose. The Yankees were terrible this year, right? Um, sports teams lose. And part of being a sports fan is experiencing those losses and feeling the pain and the heartbreak of them. I mean, that was a gut punch of a loss, right? Really felt like they might have actually been able to pull that off, and then they didn't. And learning how to deal with that, it's part of growing up. It's part of being a sports fan. There is no way for you to enjoy sports without that happening outside of being like a bandwagon fan. And if you want to just go say, ah, F it, I'm a Chiefs fan this year. And next year I'll be a Dolphins fan because they'll be the good team or whatever, right? Uh, you know, Dolphins put up 70. I'm a Dolphins fan now. And then once the Dolphins don't look good, I'll go be a Chiefs fan. And then if they lose in the playoffs, then I'll go be a Cowboys fan or whatever. Like if you just want to be that person because you just don't like rooting for losing teams, then go for it. But here's what I'll say about being a Vikings fan. A vast majority of you do not have that choice, right? Uh, you you can't renounce the Vikings. It's born in deep. I mean, for so many people, it's it's your family, right? It's your friends. It's your community. And you're not going to sacrifice that just because the team doesn't win. You know you weren't going to. And if you did choose the Vikings because, I don't know, you liked them in 2017 or whatever, and maybe you're particularly new to it, there is still that element of you don't really want to be a bandwagoner. And so if you, if you don't want to really be a bandwagoner and you're stuck here with the rest of us, right? Again, for most of you, you didn't make that choice. And I think what we do a lot when our, when our football team loses is we put it on ourselves and we say, gosh, I feel really dumb. I feel like the fool of fools for getting my hopes up. And, and I think the thing I want to tell to, to you is you are not a fool for getting your hopes up. Getting your hopes up is not a prediction that the Vikings will win the Super Bowl, Right? If you predicted that the Vikings would win the Super Bowl and you went around to all your friends and they said, this is the year they're winning the Super Bowl, I guarantee it. Yeah, all right, yeah, that was probably pretty dumb. You probably shouldn't have said that. That was, that was probably unwise. Uh, but if you just said, no, I can't wait for the season, that is not the same thing as saying, I think that they will win the Super Bowl. You do not have agency over the fact that hope springs eternal in sports. It is ingrained into the structure of sports that every team gets to start 0-0 and every team gets an equal opportunity to win the championship. And so every team's fan base can say, why not us? It's part of it. it and it's beautiful. It's, it's part of what makes sports enjoyable because you can be a Mets fan <laughs> and get up for every season, right? That's what's fun about it. So you didn't pick the Vikings. If you were born... And in all of your great wisdom, you got all the wisdom you would ever get for your entire life, and then you got to pick a sports team. Yeah, maybe you wouldn't have picked the Vikings. But you were maybe born into it, or maybe you just fell in love with Brett Favre in 20, you know, 2009 and that team or whatever. However you got here, you're here now. And we do not choose our fandoms based on who we think the best teams are. And it, it's it's really funny. You know, you'll, you'll say something. I'll say something like, man, you know, the the... Uh, the Bears don't look very good. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll get some Bears fans saying, huh, pretty funny coming from a, a fan of a team that hasn't won a Super Bowl. And it's like, what do you, do you think that that reflects on my football knowledge at all? Do you think I would choose this if I could? <laughs> no, none of us would. This sucks, right? Uh, 
But I think you need to remind yourself that you didn't choose this because you thought it would be a good idea to go hop in bed with the most cursed team in sports. Uh, you didn't you didn't pick that. That was picked for you, and now you're here, and it's part of who you are. But this is part of it. And it's a part you don't get to discard. You do not get to enjoy sports without this happening to you. It has to be part of it. So you have to learn what to do about it. And if you don't, if you can't answer that, if you go, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't like it. All I want is a championship and they can't deliver that to me. I just, I'm going to suffer. Then leave. Go, <laughs> go, go pick apples. Go golf. Go to your kid's piano recital. I don't know. Do something else. Quietly go. Goodbye. We'll miss you. And by the way, I'll see you on Sunday because you're not actually leaving. Uh, <laughs> so get me in your, get your questions in uh, at Luke Braun NFL or at Lockdown Vikings on Twitter. Um, you can send longer form stuff to Lockdown Vikings podcast at gmail.com or to the Google form in the show notes or just leave a YouTube comment. I'll see y'all tomorrow. And as always, 